Good evening. I'd like to call to order the Village of Gurney Planning and Zoning Board for this Wednesday, September 5th, 2018. Can we have a roll call, please? Bow. Here. Garrity. Here. McFarland. Here. Nordentoff. Here. Path. Here. Pasek. Here. And Sula. Present. We have 100%. Thank you. Um, for everyone to please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is the uh, approval of the minutes from our meeting that was held on July 11th. I just had one tiny little nitpicky grammar thing on the very bottom of page two of the notes. It says such those proposed. I think it should say such those as proposed. You said on page two? The, the, very, the very last line on that page. Which page? On page two. Oh, okay. Last line. Okay. okay. Huh? That's funny. Such slop, two letters. <laughs> you know, um, put it, uh, I gave mine to Clara. Yeah, I have it. Okay. okay. It. But it, it's such as proposed instead of such proposed. Okay. Um, any other comments, questions, or changes? If so not, David, if not, a motion to approve his note. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just um, want to ask a, a question. Um, <clears throat> Starting on page one, the, the, the motion was uh, was made by Mr. Papp, second by Mr. Pasek, to approve the exception. And then <clears throat> when we take a look at the vote, there were five ayes, but yet at the bottom, uh, down it says motion not carried. Five zero zero, and I believe it was carried, correct? Um, same thing occurred, I think, on the next one as well. Uh, I think it was an affirmative on that one as well. The motion was carried, correct? Okay. Good catch, Dave. I'm not sure what. Um, Dave gets a donut. He's saying that should be motion carried. Oh, gosh, okay. Okay. That's kind of a biggie. Thanks. So, does that happen in two places, you said? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, so a motion to approve with the three except uh, three changes that noted would be in order. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is a public hearing, a uh, special use permit request for um, McAllister's Deli proposed to be located at 6557 uh, Route 132, Unit A. Report. McAllister's Deli is proposing to occupy the tenant space vacated by Panera Bread at 6557 Route 132, Unit A. The property is zoned C2 PUD and is part of the Grand Hunt planned unit development. McAllister's Deli is requesting a special use permit to allow a second wall sign on the south building wall. Both proposed wall signs are approximately 45 square feet in area. Per the Grand Hunt PUD, each tenant is allowed 60 square feet of wall sign area total, which may be split into two signs if needed. The applicant is requesting a special use permit for the second wall sign as the combined area of both signs exceeds 60 square feet. The underlying sign code would allow only one wall sign. An additional wall sign would require a special use permit. As with all special use permit petitions, the Planning and Zoning Board will make a recommendation that will be forwarded to the Village Board for their determination. The petitioner is in attendance to present his plans and answer any questions the Board may have. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, as this is a public hearing, I need you, <coughs> excuse me, I need you to be sworn in by the Village Attorney. Just please raise your, your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Thank you. Great. Is there anything you'd like to add, sir? Yeah, I mean, one of the things uh, I want to bring up is I, I'm really, really excited to be part of Garni and uh, to be a family of Garni, village of Garni. 
McAllister's is a very unknown brand and they are known in South but uh, to Chicago and to the Gurney neighborhoods and uh, in general to Chicago DMA it is only a two year old brand, one and a half year to two years. And being an unknown brand, it is very helpful if we can get both the signs uh, and uh, with a small variance, of course. But another thing is the, the strip mall itself is thin and long, and it has a lot of plants in the gra Grand Avenue. It's not even visible to the street. And being an unknown brand for us, it would, I mean, it would be very helpful if you could kindly uh, consider that. Okay. Questions, comments from members of the board? I, Mr. Bao? I just have one question. Okay. In the materials, there's this directional sign mm -hmm. in the parking lot. What? Should be crossed out. It's not directional, being. Directional sign is not proposed. Not oh. Not okay. Yeah. Sorry. So, Good. Because I was. Sorry. I'm not sure that I crossed that out on the. It's all right. Yeah, I, I noticed that they were in the pictures, but they weren't. Pictures. Yeah, but they weren't mentioned at all in the. Okay. Well, then he's good to go. But they weren't mentioned at all in the write-up. So. Okay. So let me clarify. Okay. <laughs> Which signs we took? Okay. Okay. So, so the only the only issue that we're really dealing with here is whether or not to allow a second sign on what is the rear of the building. Correct. Correct. Because the existing codes don't allow signs where there's no windows, basically. Correct. And neither does the PD. Right. Based on this, this the is the sign that's in question. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So. Yes. If I may. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm very comfortable with the sign as shown here in terms of scale and, and that it would mark the back of the store. And if that's the only, that's really the only issue. The, uh, the other question I had is the awnings, do they match the size of the awnings that are also on the other tenants? Uh, are they similar? Yeah, very similar, sir. Okay. I mean, whatever same, the Panera. Slope, and so they're going to have the same. Yeah, very, very similar to the Panera, whatever the Panera had. Okay. Very similar. Uh, okay, so the the the, uh, the monument sign to me is, you know, that's that's pretty easy, and I, I can get comfortable with the one sign on the back and the. Okay, and just to be clear, the only issue that we're dealing with is the sign, on the basically on, above the loading right. dock. Right, so I'm okay, okay with it. Well, yes, what, sir. Are we establishing precedents by having allowing this sign in the back? I mean, what if Dollar Tree and no. Hellsburg Diamond oh, would no. like to get a sign in the back as well? month. Well, as will probably some other, I mean, there's, there's other. Keep, there's, keep in mind yeah. that the PUD already announced that they want to split their allowed 60 square foot wall sign into two signs, so they could already, if they wanted to, put two wall signs on, it's just the size that is. So, this is slightly so, so, bigger. So even the lack of windows and entryways. Also because of the PUD. Because, so the PUD, okay, so. Okay. That, so that helps clarify it for me. You might see, what I'm telling you is you might see the other tenants who put a wall sign on the back of that building. However, the, their total square footage would have to be um, 60. Perfect. If they did, then they would have to come okay. into this special use process okay. as did the pastors. Okay. From, from my perspective, I, I, I don't have a huge issue with it because it, it's kind of an odd situation in that we have the, the back of the building is basically fronting the entryway in, into, the, into the development. So that, that, that is unique. So I, I don't think it's going like, to open up Pandora's box in terms of a, a bunch of different opportunities, if you will, for, for variances or variance requests. But this is kind of a, a unique situation. And I, I agree. Yeah. And if it does, it's our job to turn them down if they don't seem appropriate. So yeah, it's, it's a, a judgment call in terms of, you know, what, you know in the standards there, I'm not, I don't remember exactly what it says, but, I mean, 
you know, special characteristics to the, to the particular um, property are, are, are important in our decision-making process. So we're not being arbitrary. Yes, Mr. Pesak. Uh, quick question. So what's the total square of footage of, of both sides put together? Like 90-ish? 90. 90-ish. 90. So it's 30 square feet bigger yeah. than what's allowed if they were to split it? Yes. Okay, just making sure. Yep. And then the second question is, do we have any other examples in the village of, of something like this, of such a large variance? Because typically I know we'll consider it and we'll just say, okay, look, you know, five or six square feet, fine. Or, or you know, we, we, we tend to kind of keep it within a range historically. Do we have any with such a, you know, one third larger than our, our PUD limits? If, if this was straight underlying zoning, What's the square footage test between major, minor amendment and major amendment? Or variance, I should say. Oh, the percentage? Yeah. Um, if there isn't any percentage there. set up, it just says that you can go through an administrative modification mm -hmm. if the PUD, um, if uh, what they want to request in terms of signage is allowed by right under the, under the signed ordinance. Okay. So they can go through the administrative modification. Otherwise, Okay, okay, and, and you know, fifty percent sounds like a big number, but thirty square feet doesn't sound like a big number in my mind. So um, we got to be a little careful with with, with percentages, and uh, we just can't look at in my mind. We just can't look at one. And, and keep in mind that the sign code where it says that you can only get a sign on a wall that has frontage on a public street or a parking lot or drive aisle that services the building. And which has either windows or public entrance is new to the relatively new sign code. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the signs that you see out there most likely predate that sign code, and a lot of them um, were either under the previous sign ordinance, which would have allowed a sign on the back of that building. Um, it's just the size that would have potentially been a little different, or it was. Um, regulated through a plan due to development and a lot of our PUDs do allow former tenants to have two signs, one on each end, what we call an end cap. Mm -hmm. Now this is not an end cap tenant, just keep that in mind also. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I can I totally appreciate what you just said, the end cap, if that was a wall that was for the business itself. I, I just want to go back to the precedent comment, which is, um, I know that's not what we're talking about here. It's just part of the discussion. What's to prevent Dollar Tree and, and the Diamonds to come in just next month and just say, oh, great, that's a great idea. Thank you, uh, McAllister's, for initiating this for us. Um, let's, let's do the same with Dollar Tree and the other tenants. Slippery slope. I, I just I want to know, I guess the question is not, not, not to just propose a hypothetical to, to this board, but to ask what would be the process for them to do that? Would they do the same thing? Yeah. Unless, unless they took their 60 square feet that they're allotted and divided it between both walls, they could do that by right, right now, or I'm sorry, not by right, right, but as a minor amendment to the PUD. Otherwise, if they wanted to exceed the 60 square feet, so they're going to the they have to come through this process. Yes, right. And, and I guess my question on that would be like if, we, if this gets approved, the new bar is 90 feet. So as long as they stayed within 90 feet, we have absolutely no reason to tell any other tenant in that building, well, no, you can't do it. Right. Well, the only thing that I would add to this discussion is, um, you know, the commissioners are, are correct that uh, you want to make sure that you don't make any um, capricious or unreasonable decisions. Uh, the findings of the board are just recommendations. It's not precedent per se that you could say, I'm citing the Mc McAllister case for the proposition that I get this same identical sign. Each time a petitioner comes in front of this board, you have to do just like you're doing right now and say, what is unique that would motivate us to grant this relief sought? Uh, some of the comments I've heard is it, this is kind of a uniquely situated wall in that in relationship to the main entrance to the strip mall, that might be a, a basis for commissioners to say, 
that was the reason that I made that decision on that particular night based on the testimony. Um, there was no opposition to it, and I accepted that. Could, could someone later say, you know, how's mine different than that? And that board would, you know, could, you know, uh, they would make that determination whether they felt it was similar or not. From a legal standpoint, you like to have consistency, but I don't want to give the impression that this somehow would be determinative of future requests. Each request has to be handled individually and really just focused on the hearing that you conduct, Thank you. along with the standards. And I, I guess the other thing I would throw out there is if, if there's a concern that we're setting a precedent for something, what about this is semi-offensive that we'd be concerned that we're setting a precedent? Signs in the back of the building? I mean, it's... In, in this unique situation that it, it fronts um, an entryway, but... I mean, that's that's. You have guess. to right. You'd have to agree that it is something that would be new, and that it would have business owners questioning, saying, well, "No, no, yeah, no, no you're, have you're, 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 you're missing my philosophical question. If 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 the underlying concern is that we're potentially setting a precedent, right. there must be something that we don't like about this in this particular situation. And, and Brian says we're we're evaluating this particular situation. If, if someone came up with a clone of this situation, what about this proposal is egregious, if you will, that we wouldn't want to do it again? So let's say there's a similar building, but now instead of this back goes on to residential, that, you would say, no, we're not going to do that right. because there's no point to have, right. have signage going to residential yeah. Yeah. property. Yeah. Uh, but, but you're right. Um, it is a decision, deliberative right. decision. Right. I'm not certainly weighing in on no, that no, no, at no, all no. because, no. quite frankly, you know, uh, this is the purpose for the hearing right. Right. is to have that discussion. And um, uh, considering what effect this, you know, might have, um, is part of that discussion as well. Right, okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Papp, you, did, you hit your hand. To your point, Jim, yeah. I actually pointed this out to somebody else, showed this to somebody and just said, what do you think? They said, I think it looks better. And that was my thought too, is that this back of this building doesn't look so nice. Mm -hmm. And it really is um, their only exposure. Because if you come down, unless you're in the parking lot, because if you come down Hunt Club, there's trees all along there. I took right. a picture of it and you can't see. I didn't even know there was a sprint there. So I don't think their front is giving them a lot of exposure. And if it was me, I'd be asking for the same thing just because I think it's really their only exposure. Yeah. And if you're coming into the parking lot, I think it will look better even if the other stores put theirs there. It's not like you're seeing two signs at once anyway. Right. You're not seeing the front of the building and the back of the building at the same time. And again, like, you were, Brian was saying, we're not going to allow this if it was a but, a budding residential, like the backside of a uh, uh, factory cart outlet. Well, I don't know. If that's exactly. Yeah, that's point. a good example. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's no point. There's no point. Right. So, sir, sure. I'm okay with it. Yeah, Mr. Um, yes, sir. So just an underlying, there, underlying uh, principle here that I think we can kind of look at is proportionality and mm -hmm. the, the PUD rules kind of uh, point to that in terms of uh, how much signage you can have. But I think if you look at, at uh, the proportion, the scale of the sign compared to the space, if you looked at the amount of space that Dollar Tree and Hellsberg has, then if you, you applied the same logic and said, well, let's look at how much wall space you have back there. And I think, you know, th they would need to have smaller signs and that might be a, a way f forward for us in looking at these kinds of things. I, I think it's relevant. But at the end of the day, it's an independent decision of what makes exactly. sense, which yeah. is what we get right. the big bucks we, for. We have to make least. the decision based on the facts in front of us, not some hypothetical yeah. thing that might come down the road. Yeah. One, yes, sir. One other thing I missed, um, and it was pointed out here, it says not to scale on that sign on the back. And I don't see anywhere where it actually gives the dimensions of this particular sign. Well, well, there's something in here that says they're, both signs are the same size. And oh, they are. It, yeah, and it's hard to read on the, the page behind that. 
It's the dimensions are actually there. I saw those dimensions. I didn't yeah. realize that pertained to this song because it doesn't they're, have that they're, they're, green. They're identical signs. Okay. All right. I'm fine then. Yeah, yes, sir. I, yeah. I mean, I, is there been any sort of concern? I mean, I know this sounds far fetched, but if you have a consumer that is driving in, I mean, it, wouldn't the sign kind of indicate? Well, maybe I should turn in there and I should go in to like we're enabling you know, the village shoppers to come in or people from out of town to pull into the back. Uh, to me, it's confusing. So, you know, what, I, I guess I'm, you know, what's the point it is kind of my concern. Are we inviting people to go to the back room or to the back of the, the McAllister's building? Uh, I mean, have we, have we thought about that at all? What's to stop a, a vehicle to drive back there and start pounding? Let me in. I'm here. It's McAllister's. I, I, I mean, there's, there's nothing to stop anybody right now from pulling into that parking area. Um, but but it's, but, but, but it's I, giving I, a I, but I, right. I, but it is I, it's I, giving I, a I, like I, an indication to the consumer of saying, yeah, this is McAllister's. I, I, I guess and then we're going to have other businesses put their. I, I guess we have to assume that there's some basic common sense and in, in the over average clientele, and that no one's going to pull up to a dock door. And think that's the way to get into a restaurant. Then it goes back around to say, why are we putting a logo of a restaurant on the back of a building? Because the, this particular building, the, the layout of this particular building, doesn't allow the potential client to adequately display their their signage to attract their. Has there been get any other sort of scenario of of thinking about instead of putting the signs here on the back of the building? Maybe some sort of monument sign saying, this is home of McAllister's, please pull to the front. Something like that, where it's not right onto the... I know, but there that's is. on Hunt Club. But, you know, that there's something else that's directing... No, it's not. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, it is. You're right. Yeah. It's on the corner. My apologies. Sorry. What's on Hunt Club? Sorry. The, uh, the monument sign. Monument sign. Right. What I'm show. saying is a different sign is you're, pro you know, maybe as you're driving by here, you could say McAllister is located, please pull around to the front. Something that's different than other than making it look to the public as they're driving in that this is the parking lot of the business. I think that would add more clutter, though, because it would be another ground sign like this directional sign they had in a corner, which my mind was completely open against that. Um, so I think that would be clutter. This is clean, and as you drive by, you know it's in here, but where exactly? Right. And that sort of sorts it for you pretty easily. Okay. Um, I'm going to go through the formality of opening the floor to the public. There's nobody here. I'm closing the floor to the public. Um, any additional questions, comments? Yes, sir. Uh, I would agree with Mr. Paff's statement that it doesn't look bad. It looks fine. I, I think the one point in question, um, if you look at the standards and sort of what we're evaluating and you ask what about this is sort of egregious or that we should be evaluating and it's the size, I think that according to the standards is not in line with our 60 square feet, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and I know we're not evaluating hypotheticals, but I think we, we should consider that uh, with this vote because it is in excess of the standard. Um, and I don't think we should be evaluating these hypotheticals, but is it, that, that still sits in the back of my mind. Okay. I, just to for kind of for throw it purposes out there. of this matter that we're looking at, I think we, can, I think we just need to take a good hard look at, is the sign out of scale, at 60 square feet, is the sign out of scale with the building? And I personally don't think that it is. But this is not the scale. It, just, just close that enough. The underlying sign code would allow a, a sign of 46 square feet based upon the width of the storefront, so this is 45, so your sign ordinance kind of controls the scale, so I'm just trying to give you an idea of what, you know, how it compares to what the code would allow. So scale-wise, it, it, it doesn't appear to be on a scale because it's in okay. conformance with the underlying sign code for that one sign. Uh, for the one, but we have two. Yes, it's just the back one. Actually, and that's what we're supposed to be evaluating. Sure, sure. I just want you to, um, 
to know that the underlying sign code will allow 46 square foot sign, and they're allowed for the PUV to put a 60 square foot sign on that north wall. So scale-wise, that might be a So is, I, I'm a little confused now. Is the sign being proposed 46 feet? It's 45. 45. Oh, 45. 46 is what's allowed So they would have 60 on the front and the back, so it's in theory 30, 30, or whatever. Yeah, that would be allowed 15. per the PUD. So the one on the front now is, do we have a scale for that? Is that 45, okay. 50? All right. It's 45. Right. Any other questions? So they have 15 feet to play with in the back. Okay. okay. All right. Sorry, I just wanted to be clear. That's okay. No, that's good. Yeah, go ahead, Brad. One last question. Yeah. So on the front of the store, they have this green backing that's not yeah, in the sign. Question. And then on the, <coughs> the picture that's on the rear doesn't have the green backing. Is that what they're proposing? Sir? Yes. Yes. The green is going to be on the back as well? No. Okay. It's going to be just... Uh, just as it's shown. Because yeah. I like the green in the front and I like the green in the back. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so just, just the white letters are going to be yes. on the back. White letters, okay. Yes, white letters. Yes. Because then it does make it look too much like green. This is yeah, oh yeah. This yeah. is a huge... Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments? Otherwise, uh, a motion would be in order. I'll make a motion to forward a favorable recommendation. Oh, we're, are we approving? No, no, that's no. a recommendation. Recommendation. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, for the sign variance as proposed. Okay. Tonight, or special use permit. Spe special use permit. Yeah. yeah. As, as presented. Presented. Okay. I'll second. Second by Mr. Garrity. Any discussion on the motion itself? Roll call, please. Bow. Aye. Garrity. No. McFarland? Aye. Nordentoff? Aye. Path? Aye. Pasak? No. And Sula? Aye. Motion carries five to two. Okay. Um, next uh, item. Uh, uh, just for clarification, this is oh, a sorry. recommendation, yeah, and this will now be advanced to the village board. You can check with staff. Okay. as to when that may hit the agenda. Yes, yeah, thank you. I really appreciate your time today. Okay. Thank you. Okay, okay next uh, meeting on the calendar is uh, September 12th. Are we going to have a meeting? We are. We are. Public hearing. Public hearing? Yep. Ooh. Ooh, what's it going to be? A variance for a patio that extends further into the rear setback than is allowed in code. And for a homeowner? And a resident? Yep. Okay. I passed by that house all the time and I was wondering what it was. Mm -hmm. Is this the stuff? patio that's already in place? Nope. Oh. <laughs> okay. Let's discuss the topic. Is this controversial? <laughs> no, 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 but we're, 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 we're dangerous <laughs> close to having a meeting on something that's not in the minute, or not on the notice, on the agenda. Uh, no public comment. Uh, most, motion to adjourn. Yeah. We should expect regular meetings. We will, yeah. we will at least have a meeting for the next two, so September 12th and okay. the first one in yeah. oh, As long as we're, we're talking about potential stuff. The, the Tribune article on Six Flags and the New Roller Coaster made it sound flat out that, and that they needed to get a variance because... I haven't seen that article. Because of the height? I yeah, because seen of the height. That article. It yeah, it was, it, was, it was like the day before the packets came out, it was in the Tribune on a, on a Thursday. Okay. And, it flat, and it flat out said that a variance is required because it's more than 125 feet. And the, the code doesn't require that as long as it's that not within, yeah, as long as it's not within 500 feet of, of residence. I, I can't imagine that Hometown Square is within 500 feet of residential, so. But the tape measure will tell the story on that, so. Okay. Um, motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Try to stay.